Okay, so I have been away for a while. Everyone is still really healthy in my circle, and I'm happy to report that Kelly Scott, the drummer of my band Failure, is totally recovering well from his cancer surgery. So in my world, everything's very, very upside down with schedules and what we can do, but we're all healthy, so that's the main thing. But before we dive into the bass stuff, I do want to take a second and talk about some changes coming to the channel. First of all, as you may have noticed, this is my 10th video. Whee! Now, the videos themselves will remain the same, and you're going to see them for free on YouTube. But you're also going to start to see some optional like discount offers to buy audio products, the ones I use in my work and talk about on the channel, as well as other paid optional items. I'm still working the details out with some of my partners, so it won't all be dropping at once, but you should expect to see some stuff coming online over the next two to three episodes. I hope that's okay with you guys, and again, you will be able to keep watching the videos as normal. You'll just see some additional optional things to do or buy if you want to support the channel. Okay, that's enough on that. Let's move on to the bass tones. I've been, uh, for the last few years, using fractals, uh, both in the studio and for live. And what we have come up with is a very simple uh, blockchain here. Uh, you can see here in AxeEdit. It's just got an input and an output, like all, all presets have to have. Um, an amp block, cab block, a graphic EQ block, and a reverb. So this is where I think a lot of people might be a little surprised to um, learn that for a sound like this, which is quite distorted and pretty bright, I'm actually not using a drive block before the amp block. Um, I'm getting all of that gain just from the amp block. Where I'm getting most of the gain is from this master volume right here. Um, a little bit's coming from the bright switch. And just having a lot of the treble controls kind of turned up. But really, the gain itself is coming from the master volume, which is essentially power amp distortion, I guess. <laughs> It's just a little bit more dynamic. Definitely not as noisy. I mean, even when the gate's open, there is a gate here on the um, input block. Not a whole lot of noise on the sustaining note. But what I really was going for with this sound, if you notice, there's a... You're hanging on this D note. Uh, which for us is D-flat because we tuned down a half step. You're on it for a while. It's not, I think it's a half note. So I didn't want it to just lay there. I wanted something to kind of happen. I wanted it to sound kind of aggressive and, and weird. For a while, I experimented with some modulation, some chorus, some phase, some flange. Ultimately, I found all of those kind of softened the part a little too much wanted it to be a little bit tougher. Basically just kept cranking up that power amp gain until I got the level of uh, distortion or gain that <laughs> makes big notes like that uh, that are just sustaining have a little bit more life to them. Something happens after you hit the note. There's the attack and then you hear the string rattle against the frets a little bit. As I was working on this song, I kind of realized this was really almost the featured instrument in the song and really the kind of the backbone of the song. So I wanted it to be fairly pronounced in the track. And so I kept brightening uh, the sound to bring out the, uh, the part. And so it ended up being... Almost as bright as maybe a guitar, a rhythm guitar part would be. That's how I ended up there. I got the three cabs here. Yeah, f essentially four mono slots uh, to put um, cabinets into, speaker cabinets. And this is the one that I used um, 
for the first couple of years I had the fractal. But now I'm also doing uh, two different, uh, also 10-inch speaker cabinets, the 410 SV bass with a Royer 121. And then I've also got a 210 Ampeg with, I think, also a ribbon mic, 121 again. They sound really cool together to me. They kind of complement each other in a cool way. So I've lined up um, the cabinets to have the same initial attack here. And you can see that the red uh, line represents the 410 cabinet, and that's the furthest one away from, say, zero, I guess. So you can't move any of the cabinets back in time or to the left, but you can delay them. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just delaying this first cabinet to match up with the 410, and then I'm also delaying the 210 cabinet a bit downstream here to line up with the 410. Basically, what you're trying to achieve is phase coherence between the three cabinet impulse responses. And what's happening with the graphic EQ is I'm just semi-smiley face, I guess. I'm boosting some 125. I'm also boosting some high mids. And then... Uh, this is kind of something that I use a lot of on both bass and guitar, which, which is a small room. This is a reverb block in the Fractal and selected small room here. I've made it all the, well, not quite as small as it can go, but pretty small. It's pretty short. Let me turn it off so you can really hear the difference. So now I've got a, a mono sound. But it doesn't have the intensity that I want it to have in the track. You could do this kind of small room thing uh, within your DAW, but these days I'm trying to create the patch that we're gonna use both on the record and live at the same time. That adds a lot of efficiency to the whole process of bringing a recorded album to the stage. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm uh, adding a small room. You know, I probably have left most of the other controls as they were, although I've turned the stereo spread all the way up. And I love the fact that on um, the latest firmware, you can actually go past 100% and make it real wide. Um, when it's stereo, it's definitely more impactful, and it also makes it, it easier to hear yourself in a crowded in-ear monitor mix for live. The small room gives you the impression that it's a real amp blowing up an actual acoustic space. It's almost like a, a subconscious cue, kind of, when you hear that ambience, that short ambience, and that explosive distorted sound. It just makes you feel like, yeah, that's that's a loud amp. Um, the other thing I wanted to discuss is the difference between the um, riff in the verse and in the chorus. Technically, it's really the same chord progression, but what happens in the chorus is that I add chords, a root and a fifth, instead of just single notes. So again, here's the verse bass line. and then the chorus bass line. Almost feels like you're turning on like an octave lower and makes the whole thing thicker and huger. The other thing I wanted to talk about just in general about distorted bass sounds, and one of the advantages to maybe not using a drive box and just using the amp, is that the low end of your sound is generally retained, whereas stomp boxes, unless they're specifically designed for bass, often end up chopping off below 150, 120, or 100 because they're designed for guitar. A lot of times guitar isn't really doing a whole lot in the lower regions like that, like bass does. So when you're adding the gain, just make sure that um, you're not losing too much uh, low end. What I played for you at the beginning of, of the clip here was the drum stem, which you can see right here from the album. I had the lead vocal stem also unmuted, just so you kind of knew where you were in the song. And I kept the rest muted because I really wanted you to hear the bass. On the album, there is a synth bass that is doubling the bass guitar. When I first played this sound for Greg, uh, Greg Edwards of Failure, he was like, is there synth bass in there? Because I'm not sure. That's an 
amazing bass sound. How'd you get that? Yes. That's what I wanted. I wanted it to feel like it was just bass guitar, but an added layer that made it seem more unique and more intense. So here is the drum stem and the synth bass stem. And I'm not gonna play along for, for a few seconds. I'm turning it up so you can really hear it, but it's actually kind of low in the mix. If we go down into the chorus here, you'll hear that it actually, another synth bass tone is added, and then the part obviously is a little different too. Okay, so let me play that same section, but let me put the synth bass back in context. I'm gonna play along this time and um, see if you notice the difference with the synth bass. Every time you Okay, that's going to wrap it up for the bass tone episode. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you very soon. Later.